Ngayon, magandang araw po sa lahat, Luzon, Misayas at Mindanao, at sa lahat ng Pinay saan man sa mundo. I am Dr. She Armero, your friendly OBGYN and Lifestyle Medicine Specialist, and you are watching Dangpanan, a live series of Doc She TV. We do this every Saturday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon simultaneously in YouTube, Doc She TV, and in Facebook, Dr. She Armero, OBGYN Lifestyle Clinic. The goal of this program is to give education in various social media platform to empower you, Pinais, to take charge of your health through correct and science-based or evidence-based information. Dangpanan, a Bisaya term for shelter, is chosen to be the name of this program because I want to share this comfort of good education to all of you, my viewers, through a platform that is accessible to all. Welcome to another educational Saturday afternoon. And what's more, you do not just learn, you can also share these blessings to others by giving everyone a chance to win a free online consultation coupon. So invite your friends, your relatives by typing their names in the chat box or click the share button. And don't forget the hashtag DocSheetTV or in short, Hashtag DDS TV. If this is your first time watching, don't forget to click that follow button at Dr. She Armero OBGO and Lifestyle Clinic Facebook page or click that subscribe button in YouTube, Doc She TV. And don't forget to click that notification bell for you to be notified on future videos. Dang Panang, kabahin sa panglawas o relasyon. Dok Shi Armero. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening po to all our Pinay viewers. And if you have husband with you this afternoon, good afternoon po, good morning, good evening. I am Dr. Shi Armero, ang inyong dangpanan. So this afternoon, I think uh, this is one of the very popular, mostly requested topic. Ano? Um, when I was uh, post, I posted. Uh, this topic, when I told you that I will lecture this in a society, ang dami-daming nag-comment na gusto nila mag-attend. However, the, parang nagka-problema sa Facebook Live. Kaya we are doing it this afternoon, don't worry. Most of the slides that I put there, andito pa din. Konti-konti lang yung na, na, na-remove ko because it was meant for practitioners, your physicians. So ngayon, this is really for lay. But before we go there, and before we move on to your favorite segment, yung Tama o Mali segment, let us greet our, ano muna, let us greet our viewers. Wow! We have, ano, the early birds. Hello, Ate Jean. Good afternoon. Watching from Bohol. Thank you once again for being with us. Uh, yes, Grace. Grace has been our uh, regular uh, classmate no? every afternoon. Watching from Lahog, thank you very much once again for being with us this afternoon. Also, Jessa, okay, see si Jess Samba, where are you watching from, Jess? I'm glad to have you this afternoon. Also, Julie May, hello, Julie May. Uh, Floor the Awit, okay. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, ayan, yung kuya ko. My brother in law is also watching our show this afternoon. I hope I am clear. I hope my ano, my connection is good. Um, okay. Yes. From the Laget. Wow. Hi, Jess, I really want to go back there. Uh, one time we just uh, went to Osmania Peak. And then when we went home, we brought a lot of fruits and veggies from your market. And dami daming affordable doon. Wonderful, wonderful place. Also, sino pa ba? Ayan, and dami. 
Hello, Prish. Thank you once again for watching. Oh, may taga misamis tayo. Um, uh, yes, Maria Lisa is from Misamis Oriental. Thank you for watching. If this is your first time, click the share button naman para mas madami pa tayo this afternoon. Share the online live. Okay, so tell your friends na yung topic natin ngayon maganda. Uh, okay. Alright, okay. Hello, Loida. Uh, Gapo, from where are you? Thank you for watching. Oh, we have from Davao. Angelique, thank you once again for being with us. I'm seeing familiar names here. From Mandawe also, Grace. Hello, Grace. Okay. Okay, Shanine Ferrer. Okay. Wow, thank you, thank you. Hi. <laughs> Nag-wave siya. Hi. Okay. Mayong hapon. Oh, hello, Jen. You're watching us again. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is one wonderful topic talaga. And uh, I hope kahit hindi kayo, you share it to your husband, to your friend, whoever, who think uh, who needs this one. And then later on, I will answer questions. Though may, ano na tayo, no? May naselect na tayong questions from the Facebook page, but we still continue to answer Facebook Live questions. So you can type in your questions ahead. Pag may question na kayo in your mind, or if you have questions in the lecture that uh, I will be showing you shortly. So I think we are ready to show the ano to show hello, hello Maria Aaron. Thank you for watching us this afternoon. We can show already our topic this afternoon. think is one of the trending news in show business today let me show you a picture you know them these are the couples jesse and lewis so they are popular with the hashtag just got lucky here in the philippines two of the most common reason why family gather is either during a wedding or in somebody's death. But uh, more importantly, it is the wedding. No matter how small the wedding, the family loves to gather together. And marriage has two components, or there are two aspects of marriage. The first is the unitive aspect. And the second is the procreative aspect. However, what happens when the couple will lose the procreative aspect. Did you know that the total fertility rate in the Philippines in 1970 was seven? And in 2010, it has decreased to three. That means we have decreased our total fertility rate with more than 50%. What do we do? Hi, I am Dr. Shi Armero, and you are watching Doc Shi TV, and we are going to discuss the road to forever, question mark, what if I'm infertile? What if we are infertile? What if we have a difficulty getting pregnant? So instead of talking about road to forever, today we will talk about road to fertility, what you need to know the lifestyle medicine way. So there are a lot of uh, questions already coming in asking me about what's the difference between a lifestyle medicine specialist and just an obstetrician gynecologist. So today you will see the difference of uh, what that icing on the cake is all about. So let's start with a case. Okay, I love to talk about actual cases, Mr. and Mrs. AA were married for the past 18 years, whereby Mr. AA is a 34-year-old entrepreneur. He does not smoke. He does not 
drink alcoholic beverages, and his body mass index is 22. So for those who are very conscious with their weight, I, I think you are familiar with the body mass index. You divide you divide the kilograms over the height in centimeters squared. No, in meters squared. So that's how you get the BMI. While Mrs. AA is 30 years old, gravida 3 para 2, 2, 0, 1, 2, that means she had three prior pregnancies, but only two came to term uh, because later in the case, you will see that Mrs. AA had a miscarriage. So she was a resident physician then. She occasionally uh, drinks alcoholic beverages. She is a non-smoker. However, her BMI is uh, higher than Mr. AA's, which is 24. She was treating, she's a known uh, patient with PCOS, and she was taking oral contraceptive pills for the past three months. And after that, she got pregnant. However, as I mentioned earlier, the one here, the one in this slide means she had an abortion. She had a miscarriage. So this is how we write the history, the obstetric history of our patients. Now, Mr. and Mrs. AA have been trying to conceive because their eldest is already eight years old at the time and their second child is already five years old. So they have been trying to conceive already for quite a long time. Definitely, the diagnosis of Mrs. AA is polycystic ovarian syndrome. However, could Mr. and Mrs. AA also suffer from infertility? You might think, ah, hindi naman yan infertility, doc. May, may mga anak naman sila, may dalawa na nga prior. However, as you can see in the case, it has been five years and wala namang control si Mr. and Mrs. AA. At bakit hindi nasusundan? Malalaki na, eight years old and five years old yung anak prior. So, ano nga ba ang infertility? So, let us define. Yan. So, fertility is the reduced capacity to conceive. May capacity naman na mag-conceive, pero hindi siya ganun kataas. So, sub-fertility ang tawag. Fecundability, it is the ability to get pregnant. Ito yung uh, kakayahan mong magbuntis. However, kahit sa mga fertile, normal, normally fertile couples, 20% lang ito per cycle. Kaya importante malaman natin ito because there are several complaints na do ginawa na, naman namin lahat, wala pa din. So perhaps they belong to the 80% because again, fecundability is only 20% kada cycle. Now, impaired fecundity, this is the Difficulty conceiving or carrying a pregnancy to term. While, ito na, infertility. It is the inability to conceive after one year of trying. Yung you have been trying na re regular naman yung sexual contact, wala, wala pa din. Pero pag ikay nasa 35 years old pataas, madiagnose na ang infertility kung hindi ka nagbuntes after six months. At may dalawang types ang infertility. Si primary, kung wala talagang anak before, hindi talaga nabuntis before. Primary infertility yan. Pero kung nabuntis na before, kagaya ni Mrs. AA, pero hindi na nabuntis ulit. Secondary infertility ang tawag doon. May, demogra may demographic definitions din ng infertility. Ito yung inability of those nas na nasa reproductive age, 15 to 49 years old, to become pregnant or remain pregnant within the five years of exposure to pregnancy. And kahit there is consistent union, wala namang pills na ginamit, wala namang ibang control na ginamit, hindi naman nag nagbe-breastfeed, at Ito, pinaka-importante sa lahat. They desire a child. So ito yung demographic definition of infertility. Did you know that one out of ten Filipina is infertile? Ganun siya kataas dito sa Pilipinas. Kahit naman sabihin nating nakudok, overpopulated naman na tayo, hindi na yun siya problema. Pero ang one of ten very significant na problem yan. Perhaps this can be because of 
poor understanding of the condition. Hin- yun na siguro, because mas nakikita natin ang problema of overpopulation, hindi na natin napapansin na may problema pala of infertility. Kaya may lecture tayong ganito this afternoon, today, because I want you to understand the gravity or, or the weight of infertility. Kahit sa Pilipinas. Siguro pangalawa din, kasi ang dami nating myths, yung fertility myths, yung pinaniniwalaan natin na probably because may ganito ka or hindi mo to ginagawa, kaya ka hindi nabubuntis. May isa akong alam. Yung sabi nila, hindi ka pwedeng mag, ano, you, you're not allowed to keep dogs as pets kasi nagko-compete daw yan sa baby kahit hindi ka nabubuntis. So I know of a couple like that. Gustong gusto nila yung aso pinamigay na lahat, wala pa din. Alam nyo kung bakit? Because yun, may problema pala si, si misis. It, ito din, meron ding isang myth. Ilang bata na ang pinatira sa bahay nila para lang mabuntis si misis, wala pa din. Isa yun sa mga myth natin. Siguro kung alam natin na may ganitong problema, mas maaga yung pagpapatingin natin sa doktor, mas maaga ang paghingi natin ng tulong. Eh, ganito eh. Ganito ang culture natin sa Pilipinas. Kaya nga, we are doing this awareness lecture para doon. And worse, alam nyo ba, one in every four couples in developing countries, kasali na ang Pilipinas, had been found to be affected by infertility. Ganun kadami. So, ganun ka problematic si infertility. Ano nga ba ang barriers to pregnancy? Number one, poor education. Ito, lack of awareness. Hindi natin alam na hala, infertile pala ang diagnosis sa akin or subfertility pala. Number two, higher cost. Doktora, mahal mabuntis ngayon. Hindi pa siguro ngayon, lalo na pandemic. Yan, very common. Number three, employer support. Dito kasi sa atin, para nagiging disadvantage yung paghahanap ng work pag nabubuntis tayo. So yun, we lack employer support. Siguro pag... Pag may company na who supports pregnancy, nako, swerte-swerte mo. Number four, there is limited physicians to help them. Totoo yun, hindi lahat ng mga doktor kayang i-manage ang mga ganito. Kaya I had, the actually the, the start of this uh, lecture is that I was invited in the Philippine College of Lifestyle Medicine to discuss about infertility and PCOS among us doctors. Because pag kami... Eh, mas malawak yung pag-unawa, mas malawak yung knowledge namin regarding this matter. So marami kaming makakatulong sa inyo. And lastly, lack of readiness. Pag kasi, ang couple, dapat napag-usapan ninyo yan. Minsan si Mrs. lang ang gusto. Minsan si Mr. Ah, okay. Kung anong gusto ni Mrs. Doc, okay ako ganito, ganyan. Mas okay, mas maganda. Pag kayong dalawa, same yung level of readiness nyo magbuntis. So, ayan. Itong apat, na-highlight ko ito, na ito yung kaya kong gawin. Okay? Itong employer support, hindi ko yung kaya gawin. Wala naman akong kumpanya na doon kayo patrabahuin at bigyan kayong support. So, ito basically, ito yung content ng discussion natin ngayon. This is a pie graph. So, sino mahilig magpizza? So, kung sino yung mas malaking share, yun yun siyang pinaka-importante nating i-discuss. So, i-highlight natin. Kainin natin ang part na iyon. So, I, I hope you were able also to watch my video on the common causes of female infertility, yung A, E, I, O, U. You can click it in one of my videos in my YouTube channel, Docshi TV. At ito yon i-review lang natin. Ano bang ibig sabihin ni A? So A is for age. Especially among those who ages 35 years old and above, mas may urgency tayo magpatingin. Because at this age group, consistent yung decline of ovarian stores natin. Hindi tayo parang wine na pag tumatagal, mas sumasarap. Hindi, hindi besh. Pag tumatagal, nagkakapangit. Nagkaka- <laughs> hindi ganun kaganda na yung ano natin. Stores of eggs. Pangalawa, endometriosis. Ito yung presence of supposedly nasa lining lang siya ng uterus. Ito si endometrial glands and stroma. E nagpunta sa ibang places. Ano bang nangyayari pag ganito? Pag ganito, nagkaka-adhesions, nagkaka-dysmenorrhea, may mga 
na, ano yun, they, the organs stick to each other. Kaya it affects the fertility of a woman. So may minsan nagkaka-endometrioma. Ito yung endometriotic fossa na nasa ovary. Minsan uh, nasa fallopian tube. Kaya hindi nakakadaan yung sperm at hindi nakaka-fertilize o hindi nagkaka-ectopic din kasi hindi nakakadaan yung fertilized egg doon. Ito, irregular menses for letter I. Ito yung pinakasikat na common causes of female infertility. Ang dami-dami nagpupunta sa akin because of irregular menses. At ang pinakasikat na cause of irregular menses is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Kaya nga, ito yung topic natin today. Next is obstruction of tubes. Ito yung fallopian tube. No? Ito yung kung saan nagmi-meet si egg at si sperm. Pag may problema dito, syempre hindi yan sila nagmi-meet. So, kailan ba nagkaka-cost? Kailan ba nagkaka-obstruction of the tubes? Ito yung panahon kung kuware nagkasira, no? May infection previously at hindi nagamot, nagamot agad. Nasira yung tubo o isa yon. So, or naoperahan before, kuware ruptured appendicitis. Tapos malapit sa fallopian tube, e nasira din yung fallopian tube kasi grabe yung nana, grabe yung inflammation, nakaka-affect din yun. So si right, yun, medyo obstructed na, medyo sira na. Yun siya. Last, uterine factors. Ito yung may mga endometrial polyp, yung nasisira yung lining kung saan nag nag implant si baby, yun yun. Yung mayuma na nasa submucous area or yung tinatawag na submucous mayuma na nasa lining ng matres, isa din yun sa factors kung bakit infertile ang isang babae. Now, ito, um, let's try to check kung nakinig ba. O oh, sige, pakichat naman kung may sagot. What does letter A in the A, E, E, O, U stands for? So, Is it A for amenorrhea, yung hindi nagmimins? A is for unovulation, yung hindi nangingitlog? A is for age, yung edad? Or A is for androgen, yung male hormone in our body? Ano ba yung sabi ko kanina? Para naman at least ano, sa haba-haba ng sinasabi ko, may natandaan pala. Hopefully, may matandaan kayo. Kahit naman lang si letter A. So, okay, may nakasagot na ba? Let's move on. Ayan. Ang sagot ay age. Correct. So, ang age, ang letter A in the A, E, E, O, U. Bakit importante ito? At bakit importante i-discuss ang female infertility? Bakit daw tayo nagpo-focus sa female factors? Number one, the female's reproductive cycle is very complex and would need months and or years to partially identify the underlying reason for infertility. Hindi ito siya naiintindihan natin overnight. Walang overnight solution para dito. At number two, the female's ability to conceive naturally will fall by 50% when she reaches the age of 35. Kaya very important ang female factors, especially A for age. Ayan, naka-red si age. So sana'y kahit ito, matandaan ninyo na pag may ganito mga problema, time to seek help from a specialist. Kung wala ka, kung malayo kayo sa akin, pwede namang online. O kung may, may obstetrician or gynecologist na malapit sa inyo, magpatingin kayo. Now, yun yung sabi ko, ano? pie graph kanina. So kainin natin yung pinakamalaking part. Ito yun. Ano ba ito? Ito si ovulatory disorder which comprises 20%, 27% of the pie of the causes of infertility. According to the WHO, polycystic ovarian syndrome is the commonest cause of unovulatory infertility. Ayan, masyadong sikat si polycystic ovarian syndrome. Kaya nga, pinag-uusapan pinag ito si PCOS. At minsan, napapansin ko, pag uh, sinasabihan kong patient na ay, ma, ano, uh, ganito, may polycystic ovarian syndrome tayo, parang, no, ako talaga do, para na siyang end of the world. Wow, don't worry, we will discuss it along this lecture. Ayan, ito yung sabi ko kanina, di ba, si Mr. and Mrs. AA. So, ibalik natin si Mr. and Mrs. AA. Kasi, di ba, si Mrs. AA, siya yung may 
polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, in, how do we understand polycystic ovarian syndrome the lifestyle medicine way? Ang dami-dami ng videos on polycystic ovarian syndrome, ang dami-dami ng lumalabas na supplementations, ang dami-dami ng vitamins, ang dami-dami mo ng tinitik, wala pa din. So, ano ba ito? Paano ba natin intindihin? So, is polycystic ovarian syndrome and polycystic ovaries one and the same? Iisa lang ba? Isa bang ibig sabihin yan? Isip-isip, ano kaya? Are they the same? No, they are not. Because ang polycystic appearing ovary ay si ovary lang. Ito yung siya yung nag-arrest, yung pag-develop ng follicle. Instead na from immature, nagiging konting mature, tapos hanggang naging mature, tapos hanggang namatay siya. Sa polycystic ovaries, there is a transition but stop at that part at hindi na natuloy. Kaya ang daming immature follicle na naging polycystic. Yan si polycystic ovary. Pero si polycystic ovarian syndrome ay may kasamang polycystic appearing ovary at meron ding ito ang dami-daming ano, complaints na kasama doon. Did you know again that PCOS affects 1 in 10 women? Kaya siguro yung infertility 1 in 10 women din ano because PCOS is one of the most common causes of female infertility. So ito According to, this is a Rotterdam criteria sa mga nag, nag, those who are studying medicine are familiar of the Rotterdam criteria. This is how we diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome. May video na din akong ganito. At um, yan, ang video na ito ay tungkol sa paano mag-diagnose ng uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Number one, oligo or unovulation. Ano ba ito? Yung sa mga babaeng hindi nagmi-mens, isa itong um, factor. Or hindi, isa itong criteria. Now, pangalawa, yung mga signs of aha. Ano ba yung aha, dok? <clears throat> Yun yung alopecia, yung na, na, nalalagas ang buhok. Ako, ang galing ko na magtagalog. Nalalagas ang buhok. Yun din yung... Uh, anong tawag dito? Yung nagpipimples, okay? Acne. At yun din yun yung ang daming dark hairs. It can be here sa mustache. Meron din dito. Meron kahit dito sa arm, sa legs. Meron din ganon. So those are clinical signs of male hormone predominance. Ano ba yung aha? Acne, hirsutism, and alopecia. Ito yung tatlong uh, signs of hyperandrogenism. Yung kahit ilang derma na napuntahan, um, wala pa din. So, isa yan. And polycystic appearing ovaries. So, you will, again, according to this criteria, for you to be diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, you only have to qualify two out of the three. Ito yung sabi ko, again, Pag gusto nyo mapanood yun, ito yung pinakauna kong na-upload. Kasi I noticed ang daming nag nagtatanong about polycystic ovarian syndrome. So parang ganito siya. Two out of the three, polycystic may kasamang irregular mens or irregular mens, may kasamang aha, acne, hirsutism, alopecia, or may aha at may polycystic appearing ovaries kahit regularly menstruating naman. Ito is another, this is still polycystic ovarian syndrome. In fact, ang daming phenotype ng polycystic ovarian syndrome ay A, B, C, and T. Minsan, perfect scorer. Ito, minsan, dalawa-dalawa lang. So, depende sa phenotype mo. Ano bang nangyayari sa ovaries natin, Dok? Bakit nagka, nagkaka-polycystic appearing? Androgen or the male hormone, kasi kahit female tayo, we have male hormones in our body. Now, androgen is being converted into estrogen sa ovaries. Estrogen is the female hormone. So kahit may male hormone sa katawan natin, will not turn into male, hindi tayo nagiging lalaki, because we can convert it to estrogen. Ang tawag doon, aromatization. Kaya lang, pag there is too much androgen, nawawala ito na process, at ang male hormone it remains to be a male hormone at hindi na na-produce ito si estrogen. So, wala ng estrogen. Wala ng female hormone in the ovary. So, ovary yung pinag-uusapan natin. 
Ano kasi yon? San ba nang galing si androgen dog? Bakit ba may androgen tayo? Bakit ba may male hormone tayo? Because sa kolesterol, kolesterol san ba kolesterol? Sa pagkain, o yan, may kolesterol tayo. Huwag na tayong masyadong medical kasi lay naman yung audience natin. In the adrenal gland, sabi natin adrenal, yung nakatungtong sa rinal, nakatungtong sa kidney na organ. Siya yung nagko-convert cholesterol into androgen, into male hormone, at doon nga sa ovary nagko-convert si estrogen. Kaya lang, pag sobrang taas ni cholesterol at sobrang taas ni androgen, ano nga yung sabi ko sa previous slide? nawawala si estrogen or the estrogen decreases because hindi nabablock nga yung pathway. So saan tayo magkukuha ng estrogen ngayon? Dito, extra ovarian conversion of estrogen dun sa mga fat sa katawan. Yung mahilig, kumain ng high cholesterol food, nakoconvert pa din yun into estrogen sa fat cells natin. At ito yung nagkukos kung bakit kumakapal yung lining sa uterus. At yun, hindi yun healthy. Kasi dun gusto ng cancer cells sa makakapal. So sa, sa makapal na lining ng uterus, dun sila pupunta. So ito yung nangyayari. No? Sabi ko, adrenal, yung nakatungtong sa kidney. May conversion tama sa ovary, pero may conversion sa periphery doon sa fat cells. At nagiging estrogen pa rin. Pero hindi siya ganun ka, uh, active compared sa estrogen na dapat pala sa ovary natin. Kaya kahit may estrogen, hindi nakakapangitlog yung ovaries natin kasi hindi nga siya as active as the one produced doon sa ovaries na estrogen. Kaya nagiging polycystic. Normally, ganito ito eh. Di Uh, dapat very high estrogen para mag-cause uh, ng ovulation, mag-LH surge. May mga hormones tayo na mag-cause ng ovulation. At ito, but in polycystic ovarian syndrome, isa, dalawa, tatlo, wala, ganyan. Hindi lang apat, lima, anib ito, sampo, kundi 20 immature follicles ang nakikita sa ovaries sa isang polycystic appearing ovaries. Ito siya. Okay. So, ito yung aha na sabi ko, no? Androgen or the male hormone causes manifestations such as acne, nagpipimples, grabe ka, yung dark, dark hair, yung uh, may iba na may hair sa kilikili ng so, sobrang itim, at yon alopecia, nalalagas ang buhok. Ito yung parang grade. Kami, mga doctors, we grade your hirsutism. At because we are Asian, a score of above three will already uh, give us a diagnosis of hirsutism. Yung isa, one of the signs of male hormone predominance. At kung napapansin, nasa center yung adiposity or yung fat, yung sabi nyo, bilbeli. Hindi naman ako masyadong malaki do, pero grabe yung pagka-bloated ko, yung bilbeli ko masyadong malaki. Ano bang nangyayari pag we are obese? Ano bang nangyayari sa mga overweight na PCOS? Ayan. Ito nga, na nasabi ko na ano, yung nangyayari sa ovaries natin at saka sa adrenals natin. Tumataas ang male hormones doon. Now, ang problema sa fat cells din, may conversion din nangyayari. Nag-i-increase yung estrogen lang, hindi balance. So, may mga tanong, Dok, hindi naman ako ganun kataba, pero bakit may insulin problem ako? Binigyan kong metformin ni Dok, ganyan. Because visceral fat, yung fat na nasa visceral, sa mga organs natin, mas grabe yung contribution nila sa pathway na ito. At lastly, itong sa liver natin, may, I noticed din may mga patients na elevated yung liver enzymes nila because nga may mga nagiging fatty yung liver. At other than that, itong sex hormone binding globulin, ito yung mga clingy dapat sa mga hormones. Kaya ba sex hormone binding globulin? Clingy sila sa hormone. But because of obesity or hyperinsulinemia, yung may problem sa blood sugar, 
nagdi-decrease sila. So, hindi na sila masyadong clingy. Kaya masyadong free. ba diba? Pag si boyfriend hindi ka clingy, masyadong free si boyfriend. Sana siya nagpupunta. Ganon. So, parang ganon yung analogy. At ayan, nagkakakos ng unopposed estrogen. Ang dami-daming problema pag may unopposed estrogen. Isa na doon, yung endometrial hyperplasia. Yung preliminary sa endometrial or cancer of the uterus or pwede ding cancer of the breast. Yan. Kasi takot tayo sa cancer. Sabihin na natin ganon. So, the most popular destructor of insulin receptor, ito yung may mga borderline na high in sugar or ito talaga yung mga diabetic. Ano bang most powerful destructor? Overnutrition. Yung masyadong maraming kinakain, yung kain ng kain at mga unhealthy naman. So, yan. So, obesity can cause all those effects. Cascade. So, to recall, ito yung normal. May different levels of estrogen. Dapat balance. But in polycystic ovarian syndrome, it's the male hormone that predominates. Kaya, nagiging mukhang lalaki tayo. Yung malaki yung uh, katawan, nagkaka-mustache, nagkaka-pimples, kumakalbo. Ito, excess androgen and excess insulin. Kasi nga may problem din with sugar. Nagkaka-problem din tayo sa sugar. But ito, mas importante, lalo na sa layman. Dok, totoo bang namaman ng picos? Oo, totoo. Totoo bang nakakapikos ang stress? Opo, totoo. Inflammation can lead to increase male hormones in the body or stress can increase male hormones in the body. And of course, lifestyle factors. Gaya ng ano yung kinakain mo, nag exercise ka ba, etc. So yan, ang dami natin na pag-usapan. Yung sa brain, yung pag-release ng mga hormone, yung sa insulin, sa pancreas, yung sa ovaries, sa adrenal. Naku, pwede na kayong mag-medicine. Sa liver, yung sex hormone binding globulin. Sa buhok, nagda-darken ang buhok. And of course, the conversion of estrogen in the fats with, which are weaker estrogens. Kaya hindi nakakapag-ovulate. So anong gagawin natin? Ito na. Dapat yung management natin directed towards the consequences. Ang dami-daming consequences ng polycystic ovarian syndrome. Other than nakakahiyang masyadong maraming pimples, nakakahiyang ang dami-dami nating hair, ito, infertility, diabetes, meron ding nakakakos ng hypertension, depression, at ito, ito yung sabi ko, endometrial hyperplasia or cancer. But, pero dahil ang topic natin about infertility, so infertility yung i-emphasize ko. So ano bang i-request ng isang doktor? At least, ha? Ito, transvaginal ultrasound, test for sugar. So kung napapansin nyo, hindi lang fasting blood sugar, 75 grams UGTT talaga yung request ko, thyroid hormone uh, screening kasi ito yung uh, very common metabolic disorder din na nagpipresent ng irregular menses, uh, ng infertility kaya kasali siya sa tinitest ko. Lipid profile para malaman ang cholesterol because sa nakikita natin, ang pinaka nasa taas ng algorithm is elevated cholesterol kaya kasali siya. Sabi ko kanina, tinitest natin ang liver function so ito si SGPT. And itong last, may or may not, um, later na yan, no? uh, ito muna ang mga basic natin. So you will know what's really the problem. Now, if you can see here, this is an algorithm of how we treat polycystic ovarian syndrome. Sa so nakikita natin, yung lifestyle modification is nasa taas. Ayan, very on top. Kaya lang, after that, Depende kung anong gusto natin, fertility or not seeking fertility, magpatingin talaga sa so OBGYN. But if you would like to emphasize on lifestyle medicine, lifestyle modification yung direction natin because it's at the top of the algorithm, meaning kailangang ma-address yan para we can follow through the algorithm. And who can help you? Visit your lifestyle medicine obstetrician gynecologist. Yan ang difference. Because lifestyle modification is the cornerstone of treatment of PCOS and infertility. Alam nyo ba na weight reduction is the first best treatment, especially for obese women. 
kahit 2 to 5% lang of reduction, your metabolic and reproductive function will already increase. Uh, may mga tanong din about the diet, but according to this uh, reference, the significant overall decrease in caloric intake is more important than the specific composition of the diet. Kasi ang dami-dami nang lumalabas ngayon, ano? So, yun. Although, ito din, may mga patient talagang ganito. Kasi nagbabasa din, di ba? Dok, hindi mo, hindi mo ba ako iminmetformin? Ito. Although treatment with metformin can facilitate weight loss primarily by suppressing appetite, the overall effect is modest and inconsistent. Meaning, hindi talaga siya assurance, no? Na it can treat because inconsistent and modest. Ito yung mga popular treatment for those PCOS patients and with infertility. But hindi ko na yan iisa-isahin kasi obstetrician gynecologist na ang magpe-prescribe niyan sa inyo. Now, ito, this is a common question. Doc, when will I stop taking the pills? And when I stop, will I become pregnant already? Ito yung very common question kasi minsan din nagmamadali tayong magbuntis. But let's hold that. Because now, we will already talk about PCOS and pregnancy. Ano bang nangyayari pag PCOS ako at pinipilit kong magbuntis agad? Can PCOS cause miscarriage? Nakakakos ba ng miscarriage ang may polycystic ovarian syndrome? Yes or no? Try to guess lang ah. Guess mo lang ito. Yes or no lang naman. Pili ka lang. Ang sagot ni Doc Shi ay... Yes. According to the studies, polycystic ovarian syndrome is associated with increased risk of miscarriage, gestational diabetes mellitus, hypertension, preterm delivery, and birth of a small for gestational age or large for gestational age infant. Ibig sabihin, kahit sabihin natin na kapag short ka tayo at nabuntis tayo, hindi siya assurance na walang problema during pregnancy. Ang ang karamihan talaga nagkaka-miscarriage. Nabuntis sila pero naku, naku, na, napupunit. So mas nagiging traumatic tuloy. Traumatic pa yung pagiging polycystic ovarian syndrome patient niya, nabuntis siya tapos nakunan pa. Look at what happened to Mrs. AA. 'Di ba? Kasali sa definition na inability to become or remain pregnant within five years of exposure. So, pagbalikan natin si AA, remain pregnant. So, nabuntis siya, but he, she was not able to remain pregnant. So, can be cause cause miscarriage? Yes. And a prolonged time to pregnancy is a known risk factor for obstetric complications and adverse perinatal outcomes and is often seen in women with polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now, Balikan, ta balikan natin yung question. Could Mr. and Mrs. AA also suffer from infertility? Sagot, yes. Diba? Infertility din yun kasi they were not able to keep the pregnancy. Ang tawag sa kanila, secondary infertility, secondary to polycystic ovarian syndrome. Kasi may prior pregnancy na at hindi na nabuntis ulit. Now, this is a common question na din. Doc, ano bang role ng lifestyle medicine specialist para magbuntis ang isang patient na may polycystic ovarian syndrome? Ito yung role namin. This is to make it essential to ensure that a woman with polycystic ovarian syndrome is as healthy as possible prior to conception and kung magkakaroon ng assistive reproductive technique, then to make it safe and an appropriate intervention. Now, balikin natin na ulit si Mr. and Mrs. AA. Ayan, highlight ko yung mga BMI nila. So, kung na-search niyo yung body mass index, ito yon, ito yung table. Tandaan natin si Mr. AA 22, si Mrs. AA 24. 22 to 24, according to the WHO, nasa normal. However, in the body mass index among the Asian and the Pacific Hindi, we have a lower range. Si Mr. AA, yes, nakaya pa no, sa normal, but nasa high normal. 
Pero si Mrs. EA, nasa overweight na siya. Remember, both of them are Filipino. Kaya hindi tayo, wala tayo dito, nasa Asia Pacific tayo. So if you are there at home, you try to compute your body mass index. Again, how do we compute? Your weight in kilos divided by your height in meters squared. So ito yung nakikita natin yung high five in fighting picos. Uh, enjoy meditation and exercise, stop eating junk food, supplement or boost your immunity, switch to healthy and organic food, and then be joyful always to alter the genetic tendency. But these are not specific. The role of lifestyle medicine specialist is to be specific in the management. How do we uh, know if the lifestyle inter interventions are effective? Ito yun, di ba sabi? Dapat may weight loss. Kahit 2 to 5% of weight loss, okay na yon. Pero hindi pwedeng 2 to 5% for the next year. Dapat achievable siya within the 6 months. Meaning, dapat klaro yung goal. Yung weight loss natin, dapat ma-achieve natin within the next 6 months. Kung wari, you are 60 kilos. Ano bang 10% of 66? ba? So dapat... By ano bang April, May, June, July, August, September, October. Dapat by October, you will already weigh at least alakas, 60 minus 6, 54. <laughs> Dapat naging 54 kilos ka na. Ang galing ko ng mag-math. Okay. Also, hindi pwedeng overnight solution. Nag-check up ka this, this time, tapos hindi ka na nakita. Eh, hindi pwedeng ganun. Pag picos ka with infertility, at least see me or your doctor once a month para ma-monitor natin. And ito yung pinaka-special sa lahat. Hindi natin nababasa sa blogs or napapanood sa vlogs because management, lifestyle management, is always patient-centered and individualized. Iba yung management ko kay AA, iba yung management ko kay BB, iba ang management ko kay CC. Ganon siya. Now, may mga behavior strategies naman tayo. What I do with my patient, I let them self-monitor. Sila yung pinapasulat ko, yung ano yung kinakain nila. So, pinapasulat ko sa notebook para makita ko when they see me again, but makita nila when nagsusulat sila. So, hindi siya to judge na, oy, ang pangit ng kinakain mo. It's self-awareness, it's self-monitoring kung totoo bang nagagawa ko ito. Yan. Now, Nasa iba-ibang stages din kasi yung mga patient. Kaya sabi ko kanina, individualized dapat. May tinatawag tayong stages of change. Nasa iba-iba, may ibang patient na pumupunta sa akin ready-ready na. May iba naman, hindi nila alam na may problema pala sila. Or may iba na medyo alam nila, pero hindi masyado. So depende kung saan kayo dito, dun din nabidepend yung management ng isang life sa medicine specialist. And other than that, we always emphasize on working on areas where you will see quick success. Kuwari, doc, in, ano, ano, yung mga fruits na kaya kong kainin, yung mga ordinary lang. Or then, let's start with the ordinary. Ano bang ordinary? Sabi niya, yun, orange, apple, banana. O, okay, okay. Ano bang not ordinary? Kiwi, yung mga ganon. Wag, wag yun, hindi yung kailangan. Kahit saging, saging, apple, orange, okay na yun. So let's start with where you will see quick success. Kaya nga kailangan you communicate well with your uh, obstetrician gynecologist. Now, general healthy eating principles should be followed for all women. Kahit hindi mataba, general healthy eating principles talaga ang pinafollow natin. Whole food, plant-based. Okay. Yun. Uh, may tanong din, common question. Is weight loss part of the goals of management? Kasi may iba talagang nagpupunta na hindi naman mataba. Minsan, masyado ding payat. So, is weight loss part? Weight loss is part kung may excess weight. We have to decrease the calories, ganito, ganyan. But for those without excess weight, general healthy eating principles pa din ang i-establish natin. Because even when you are lean, hindi ibig sabihin walang problema sa sugar, sa insulin resistance. Kasi nga, it's all about insulin resistance, too much cholesterol. Kaya importante, healthy yung diet natin. But hindi na mag ng weight. How about exercise? How do we do exercise? Ito yon. nasa dapat minimum of 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity physical activity. Adok! 
every day naman ako nagmumoling. Mga one hour din yon. Pero pag nagmumoling tayo, hindi naman yung moderate intensity kasi nakaka nakakausap pa natin yung kasama natin, nakaka-video keep, nakakakanta pa. Ang moderate intensity physical activity, roughly, na you can still talk, but you cannot sing anymore. Kasi medyo uh, intense. May higher intensity na yung exercise natin. So requirement is only 150 minutes per week. So that's approximately 30 minutes from Monday to Friday. Or kung ano ka naman, kung weekend warrior ka, doc, weekend yun talaga ang kaya ko. So moderate intensity activity or physical activity or exercise, sun, Saturdays and Sundays, 75 minutes. So that's around 1 hour and 50 minutes. Now, pwede ding, ano ka, mag-count ka ng steps mo, 1,000 steps, no? O, yan, i-achieve mo yan. Ang 1,000 steps mo, In, or in bouts of 10 minutes. Okay? So, may ano ni, may mga smartwatches na ngayon. So, kayang-kaya itong gawin. So, those are just among the exercise activities. So, ito na yon. Si Mr. and Mrs. AA, nagpatingin na, and then, nag-convert na ng whole food plant-based diet. And yun, di ba, previously, 8 years married sila. So, this is 2 years after the miscarriage happened. 10 years na silang married. Nag-decrease yung body mass index ni Mr. AA, naging 21. Si Mrs. AA, naging 21 na din. So, at other than that, she delivered a live, healthy, rainbow baby girl last April 12, 2019. So, kaka-2 years old lang. Ang galing. At sino yan siya? Ito yan siya. That was me. Mrs. AA was me. Kaya nga sabi ko, I am a PICA survivor and I am battling PICAs up to this day. And this is my rainbow baby. I had her after I converted my lifestyle into a healthier one. In fact, I was... I never had meat in my pregnancy. And you know, my daughter really loves to eat all the vegetables and the fruits. And it was my parents who introduced us, our family, to this lifestyle uh, modification in this community. So I am also encouraging you. It's not yet too late for you to convert. It's not, ano siya, it's not difficult. Ah, paano ba? Challenging. Challenging siya. But hindi naman mahirap. As long as you have accountability partners. Sila yun. Sila yung accountability partners ko. I am surviving. I am surviving my battle against PICOS because I have them helping me. Okay. So you also need your own accountability partners. This is my daughter. Yung, when you just, she just learned to walk, she loves to eat my fruit ano, slices. Her usual snack also. Maybe. This is her usual snack. Uh, carrots, pepino, yan. And this was her photo in her birthday. Lahat yan. Plant-based yan lahat. So very proud that uh, up to this day, we are able to uh, consistently live by what I am teaching you. So in summary, yan, tapos na tayo. In summary, ito yung causes. Overeating, walang exercise, nag-Netflix lang, tulog ng tulog, uh, nag-gain ng weight, or very stressful yung work. So, how do we address this? Ito yung simple. Diba gusto ko simple? Daily exercise. You can go to YouTube talagang dapat may bayad na ito sa akin. Kasi ini-endorse ko talaga ito. Because when I, when I was battling, my PICOS, no, I am still battling, I do this exercise. Mabilis lang. 30 minutes lang ito. And then, hindi kailangan dapat magaling sumayaw. Kahit hindi ka, puro kaliwa yung paa, kaya mo ito. Shift the healthier food option. Of course, I have to walk my talk. So yan, these are five servings of fruits, sinaslice at minimix with no dressing, wala, plain lang yan. And then, of course, determine ovulation. Hindi, I will not encourage you using the app kasi hindi siya masyadong accurate. I am teaching how to determine ovulation together with my husband. This is our advocacy. Uh, we always require the presence of the husband and the wife. If you notice, naka-pair-pair yan silang lahat, whether physical or online. Kasi ngayon, online na ngayon, di ba? So my patients really come to me, both husband and wife. Yan yung request namin. So we can manage you properly. Remember that in Psalms, sabi dito, 
but the Lord can also turn a barren wilderness into an oasis with water. He can make springs flow into desert lands. Kasama din ng life cell modification is that we have to have faith in the in somebody up there who will help us with this. Yung efforts natin, dapat may kasamang prayers at may kasama na ding faith. Na truly, this will happen in due time. So to summarize na talaga, super summary na ito. How do we fight infertility among those with PCOS? Prepare and assist couples with the necessary information. Ito yon, my information drive, awareness drive tayo to be tested. Minsan din kasi it's the husband that is afraid to be tested. Hindi afraid. Siguro hesitant because of the stigma. What if doc, ako yung may problema? That's the reason why hindi ako nagre-request ng semen analysis at the first. Because yung mga patients ko, siguro you notice, hindi ako nagpapasemen analysis agad. Because I want to get, gusto kong makuha yung loob ni husband muna bago tayo magre-request ng semen analysis. Para kahit anumang result ng semen analysis, hindi siya mag-withdraw from the management. Because siguro culture na din yan, culture kasi ng Pinoy na, dapat yung male partners natin strong, walang problema. Kaya ganyan siya. No? So we have to understand also where we are coming from. Kaya hindi natin, let's not carelessly, ano, let us not carelessly uh, not consider the culture also of Filipinos. Next, communicate. Communicate information to significant others. Hindi lang sa partner, pwede ding sa family na may ganitong problema tayo. Kasi minsan, ang nakaka-pressure family din, ano ba? Kailan ba kayo mga anak? Wala na. Tanda-tanda nyo na. Wala pa ding baby. Minsan yun, nakaka-offend yun. So, awareness is very important. Then, ano, with the family members that hindi lang kayo nahihirapan, kami din. So, please understand us. Okay? Overcome. Let us assist couples with infertility to overcome their symptoms and lessen related health risks. Yan. Healthy lifestyle ulit. Okay? And lastly, provide a support network to freely and openly discuss all aspects of infertility. Again, it's very important that you are comfortable with the obstetrician gynecologist na nilapitan nyo because you really have to discuss all these things. Okay? So... I, I, I saw this wonderful quote of Jane Woodall, but that we ko konte. Only if we understand can we care. Only if we care will we be able to help. And only if we help shall we become successful in battling against PCOS and infertility. This advice or this quote goes out not just to patients, but even to family members, to husbands who are accountability partners of our patients. And if you think that this video has helped you, please click that subscribe button. If you are not yet a subscriber, click that subscribe button and the notification bell because I'll be uploading another video in the future. You share this to others to, hope, to whom you think they need it. Once again, I am Dr. Shi Armera, your friendly OBGYN and lifestyle medicine specialist, and you are watching Doc Shi TV, your way of life. Bye! Okay, I saw a lot of wonderful questions in our chat box. If you have questions from that video, kindly type it in the chat box so I can address it later on. Because today, this part already of Dangpanan, we will be doing the Tama o Mali segment where you will have the chance to win a free online consultation coupon. So please type, okay, how do we win the free online consultation? You type in. Uh, the number, pop quiz number, tama o mali, so that you will know 
that um, three winners na lang. Because we have one winner, winner earlier, the one who answered yes in uh, in our lecture earlier. So we'll have three questions for Tama o Mali this afternoon, but you will have four free online consultation coupon winners. Okay, so are we ready to answer? Let us do the... Okay. All right. So pop quiz already. Get ready typing. Tama o mali. Pop quiz number and then tama o mali. Okay. We go to the first question. Pop quiz number one. Tama o mali. When ultrasound results show multiple cystic structure in the ovaries, the patient has PCOS. Tama o mali. Again, when the ultrasound says that there are multiple cystic structure in the ovaries, the patient already has PCOS. Tama o mali. Okay, so the answer for this pop quiz question is male. Very good. Good job. Male because polycystic appearing ovaries is just one among the criteria of polycystic ovary syndrome. Again, there are three polycystic appearing ovaries or the multiple cysts in the ovaries. Number two, irregular menses and the aha or the male hormone predominance, acne, hirsutism, and alopecia. All right, very good. So keep typing so we can choose our winners. Now, the second question, pop quiz number two. Question, PCOS is a hormonal imbalance disease. Therefore, hormone or contraceptive pill is the cure. Again, PCOS is a hormonal imbalance disease. Therefore, hormonal or contraceptive pill is the cure. PQ number two is tama o mali. Let's go. Okay, so is PQ number two tama o mali? The answer is no. That's the reason why we always start with awareness lectures like this because you have to understand na yung pills ay hindi po gamot. The pills is for us to help transition you to a healthier lifestyle. So, pero hindi siya pwedeng hindi kasali. In in our management, kasali talaga yon. But uh, hindi siya yung cure. In fact, kahit you are taking pills, which is, I think I saw one of the questions about it, even if you are taking pills at hindi ka naging consistent in the lifestyle modification mo, then wala pa din. When you stop the pills, your menses will come back to being irregular and it pushes you, it forces you to go back to the pills ulit. So it has to come hand in hand. Modification with guidance with your obstetrician gynecologist. Kasi hindi din pwedeng you have just to pick any pill in the market. Hindi pwedeng ganon. Okay? All right. So pop quiz number three. Tama o mali? All PCOS patients are either overweight or obese. Again, tama o mali? All PCOS patients are either overweight or obese. Okay. Ano bang answer? Mag -ano? Okay, very good. They're following the instruction. Very wow. good, very good. So, P pop quiz number three, tama o mali, is... Mali. Hindi lahat po na picos mataba. In fact, those who are lean or yung mapapayat, yun yung mas mahirap i-address. Because ba weight loss, yun yung nasa cornerstone of treatment natin because overnutrition is the most common cause ng ganitong condition. Yung mga mapapayat, yun yung mas mahirap because the fat, nasa organs nila, nasa viscera, nasa organs nila yung problema. Uh, so that is why kahit payat o mataba, pwede kang magkaroon ng PCOS or PCOS. Kaya importante, you know what this is about so we can address it properly. Okay, 
So, wow. Ayan, may mga sagot. Very good. Thank you very much for participating in our pop quiz segment. Okay, before I proceed to answering the questions of the the live audience and I think kasi yung live audience mas related yung questions nila sa lecture ko. So we'll address it first and then saka na yung question sa Facebook page. Okay, sige. Okay. Okay daw. So um before I answer the questions, let me invite you to our next class next Saturday. We have a guest. He's a doctor of medicine also. He's majoring in uh, addiction medicine. This is also his advocacy and he will be joining us as we talk about pregnancy and battling addiction. So that will be next Saturday. So it's a it's a it's another good information drive for all of us. Kasi hindi tayo addict, may matutunan tayo. So ayan, okay. Thank you for sharing this uh, Facebook YouTube live not to your friends. Continue clicking the share button because uh, even when we are done with the live already, they can replay this video at a later time. Again, the purpose of this is to increase education to in, to to be for you to be able to take charge of your health through correct education. So, wala na talagang reason for you not to take charge of your health. So, uh, we can let's move on to ask Doxy segment. <music> Ayan. Okay. Let's choose. Okay. We can choose already questions. But may nabasa akong wonderful question dito. Uh, ito. All right. Doc, I've been to plant-based diet, regular physical activities, pero still struggling with irregular menstruation. What will I do? Okay. Number one. This is, this is the rule now of the obstetrician and gynecologist. There should be a particular medication that it should be given to you. Depende. What is the irregular menstruation? Is it too heavy, prolonged, or walang menstruation at all? Kasi iba-ibang hormone na pill ang ibinibigay natin for the type of irregular menstruation. That is why it's very important that you seek assistance from an, an obstetrician and gynecologist. Since you have been winning for several uh, Dangpanan episodes already at the Genie. Let's do our online consultations. Yeah, it's very easy to help this one, especially that the harder part, you're already doing it. You have been eating healthy, physical activity. But one more, perhaps look into your work. Uh, Bakay the stress, because you know, stress can cause inflammation in our body, which can also contribute to the irregularity of your menses. May tinatawag tayong stress hormone that increases pag nagsistress tayo. That stress hormone, kin, ana, it competes with the hormones of our female hormones. Kaya nagkaka, nagkakaroon ng irregular menstruation. Kaya nga, when patients come to me, wala silang, hindi sila nagbimens, usual talagang question ko, are you under stress lately? Or are you experiencing chronic stress in your work? Or is there is there a very stressful situation at home or at the workplace that you are in right now? So kasala yon sa mga questions ko. Because stress truly can affect the cycle, the menstrual cycle. Ayan. Okay, I hope I was able to answer that. May another question? Okay, doc, start na ko take of pills. Regular na ako mag-mens. And almost more than six months na ako mag-take of pills. Then ako na notice if mustap ko og inom sa pills for one month, di sadya mag-mens. Yes, it can happen. Again, the pills is just used to transition. Ano? It will just help you transition to the lifestyle modification I was telling. Again, we focus on the cause. San, paano ba nagsisimula si P PCOS? San ba nagsimula si PCOS? Again, elevated cholesterol level. Kahit pa mag-pills ka ng 3 years, pero wala pa din. Hindi pa din tayo nakapag-correct ng lifestyle natin. Babalik pa din tayo sa pag-titake, pag mag-stop tayo. And doon nag nagkaka-side effect. Kasi hormonal pills yan, synthetic yan lahat. Hindi yan galing sa katawan natin. So may side effect yung mga ganyan. Again, it's not, it's never too late to restart no? our a healthy lifestyle. Yun yung sabi ko, di ba? I too had a very unhealthy lifestyle. Before, when I was training, hindi ka nakakakain. It's true, being a doctor, talagang toxic siya. Especially training. Tapos, ubi ako. So, may nanganganak. Like, totoo yun. 
na may nanganganak every time, hindi ako nakakakain. Kasi pag first year ka, nasa labor room ka lang palagi. So, alam mo yung kinakain ko? Chocolate. So, I can last from 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock the next day. Para hindi ako magutom. So, that's how bad my diet was. Tapos, wala akong tulog. Pagka next day, tulog ako whole day. So, ganun siya ka-unhealthy. So, kahit mag ako, hindi nagagamot. Yun nga, yun, nag-pills ako, nabuntis ako, napunan ako. So, may mga ang dami-daming side effect ng mga ganun. So, we have to understand where the disease is coming from and address it from the top. Or, balik na rin natin, address it from the roots, di ba? Mas relatable yung roots. So, let's kill the root of the of the PCOS para hindi siya pabalik-balik. Yan. Okay. Ma- okay, ito na. Doc, po- possible ba na mabuntis ang isang babae na may picos pero hindi naman niya alam na may picos siya? Yes! Oo! Oh, oh. uh, yeah. It is possible that you are, you do not know that you have picos because number one, if hindi ka naman aware sa condition, hindi mo alam na picos pala ito. That's actually the reason why I am doing this. Para maraming ma-educate. At faster, parang mas timely yung paghihingi natin ng tulong because we really need help to to manage this one. Hindi hindi kaya na i-fight natin, sarilinin natin ang ating laban against PICOS. We need people, hindi lang din doctor. Kailangan natin yung mga kasama sa bahay, alam nila. na we are battling this kind of disease. One common problem of patients, doc, ang hirap nung prescribe mo na diet kasi sila, kumakain sila ng pork sa bahay. Did you know? That my, may, may, may pa did you know ako? <laughs> Not to na smile. Kasi yung husband ko, he's a typical Cebuano. Yung gustong-gustong maglechon, yung gustong-gustong pork, yun siya, ganyan siya. Yun yung gusto niyang kainin. But when I told him, de, ayoko mamatay maaga, ang liliit pa ng mga anak natin. Please help me battle with my picos. Ayan. <laughs> Tag-hi siya. Paki-on naman yung video mo para ma-ano kita, para mag-greet kita. Paki-on na, bilis. He is helping me with dangpanan in doing this, ano, awareness. Wala kang camera de, Naka-black ka. Si, ano naman, no? Wala siyang camera. Bakit de? Wala kang camera de. Ayan, wala siyang camera. Ayaw magpakita. Ayan. Saan na ba? Ipaki-on naman yung camera mo. Ayaw niya. <laughs> okay. So, anyway. Uh, he is very fond of eating pork. He loves to drink soft drinks. And when I told him, I really need help. Hindi ko to kaya ako lang. Kasi nakakaingit din, no? Nag-meet sila, tapos ikaw nagsasalad ka lang. Ano? Bakit ganun? So, dapat kayong lahat. So, that's why I always emphasize. Pag may ganitong talks, I always emphasize the role of the people around the house. Kaya, if si ate mo, si kuya mo, si husband mo, it's not very helpful with the change of your life. So, you share this video to them. You tell them it's very important for you to help me talaga. Ganyan siya. Tapos, posible man ba na mabuntis? Of course, pag isang babae may picos at nakapag-rupture yung isang may naka- may may nak ano ano bang tagalog na kalingkawas may isang follicle na naka free from being immature di ba sabi ko lahat ng follicle sa picos immature pag may isa lang na naka rupture doon kasi you were able to probably modify your life sa nakapag rest ka exercise ka nakakain ka ng healthy may possibility tas nag lose ka pa ng weight kahit polycystic pa rin ang background tas may isang follicle doon na naka na kaya niyang mag-rupture, naging mature, pwede kang mabuntis doon. At nag-contact pa kayo, yun, pwede kang mabuntis noon. Okay, so I hope nasagot ko yon Okay. Uh, ayan. Alright. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I'm glad that uh, you find my explanations clear. I really try my best to make it simple kasi medyo complicated talaga ang PICO. So, pag uh, gusto nyo naman yung PICO na hindi about infertility, we can also discuss it in another time kasi medyo talagang broad ito na topic. Okay? So, I think we are ready. I think may konti. Kaya pa ba? Let's, sige. Kasi may ano eh, may mga questions sa Facebook page. Ito, not related about PICO. Let's answer. Mabilis lang. Okay. Doc, good uh, good day po, doctor. Nine months na po ang chan ko, pero schedule ko po is a Friday pa. Pero pag ihi ko po, kaninang umaga, may kasamang dugo, pero no pay naman po. Pinapakiramdaman ko po. Punta na ba ako sa hospital? Okay. Considering she is term, buntis siya, 
Uh, hindi ko alam kung anong schedule ito, due date ba, o schedule for cesarean section. Pag cesarean section ka at may ganitong discharges, likely nag-open ang cervix mo, punta ka na agad. Pero kung sabihin natin schedule na due date mo, anytime pwede kang mag-labor, walang problema ang may mga gano'n, ano, ano siya? May dugo-dugo. May konting dugo-dugo sa discharge. Kasi nag-open ang cervix, that's part of uh, signs of labor, early signs of labor. Ang gusto natin is you monitor the fetal movement, pag uh, regular ba ang uterine contraction, hindi naman kasi kailangan painful talaga kasi may ibang, yung threshold of pain nila medyo mas taas. So, kahit regular yung contraction, pero yung threshold of pain nila, hindi sila yung medyo eng-eng, hindi nila nararamdaman agad yung pain. So, you, what do you do? You monitor contractions. Pag, does it come regularly? Number two, water ba yung lumabas? Number three, ayan, number three, kung masyadong maraming dugo, yan, hindi yan magandang sign. Pero yung mga spotting-spotting, okay lang yan. Pang-apat, nag-decrease yung fetal movement. Pag may ganon, go to the nearest hospital. At tsaka, may video na ako nito when, parang may, may, bisaya, may bisaya version din ako, when to go to the hospital. Ganun. Okay? Next question. Doc, do, ay, ma'am, ta, ma, oh ma'am, tanong ko lang po, posible po ba mabuntes ang babae kahit naka-breastfeed ni higit one year? Ay, lalo na, pag... Pag higit one year ka nang nag-breastfeed, lalo nang mabubuntis ka. Kasi, ano eh, wala nang inhibitions from prolactin oxytocin. So, very high chance of you getting pregnant. Okay? Hello, Doc. Ay, manguta na lang ko. Unsay dapat buhaton if itchy atong private part. Okay, itchiness in the private part can be two, most common two. Number one, either bacterial vaginosis. It can be because there is a... a a change in the pH in your vagina, kaya nagkakaroon ng parang yung bad bacteria na mas, mas uh, marami kaysa sa good bacteria. Supposedly, balance sila. So, how do we address this? I think she's asking about home remedies about this. So, uh, no overzealous cleaning. Huwag yung magwash umaga, hapon, gabi, namamatay ang good bacteria nan. Huwag, huwag uh, always sa panty liner. You wash at least just once a day and then water na. And then, wala nang apple cider, apple cider ganun. Keep, keep your food healthy. Because if uh, isang reason is pag masyadong mataas ang sugar, nagkaka-candidiasis or nagkaka-fungal infection tayo. Tawag dyan, candidiasis. So yun. Uh, pag itchy, try to modify. Huwag masyado yung mga tatamis. More on high fiber. Pag itchy pa din, visit me. Kasi hindi yan natin na ma-manage dito lang. Ganito, online. Okay? Next. Doc, I guess I have words. Naku. Makatakod ka ako sa akong partner, Annie Dong. Okay, yung tanong niya, will she become infectious to her partner? Ang mas worry mo, saan mo nakuha yan? Siyempre, sexually transmitted yan, skin-to-skin -skin contact. Baka nakuha mo din yan sa kanya. Paki-check paki saan ba ang source nito? Because warts, if it's really warts, it's sexually transmitted. And definitely, na nagiging contagious yan. Okay? Kahit sino mang nakaka-rub to rub mo dyan sa may area ng warts, it can be transmitted. Okay, last. Ah, okay, I am pregnant po and meron pong pinkish lang. Okay, pinkish na stain. Should I be worried? Sabi normal lang daw to. Okay. Yes, normal. Di ba sabi ko kanina? Normal. Kapag term ka na, going to delivery na, pero pag first trimester, second trimester na may pinkish na ginito, isang danger sign of pregnancy ito. Hindi normal na may pinkish discharge on the first and the second trimester. May ginawa na rin akong video about this one. Kindly check it out. May iba pang danger signs of pregnancy. Pag may ganito, please seek uh, medical advice. I think that was the last question ano, in... In our Facebook page. Ayan, may, parang may question pa. Okay. Sige. Thank you for this. Subscribe in my YouTube channel, Docshi TV, or click the follow button also in Dr. She Armero OBGYN Lifestyle Clinic. Okay. Uh, hi, Doc. Ask ko if normal ra ang menstruation and the trans B, pero wala gihapon na buntis. Oh! Okay. Good question. Kasi may tinatawag tayong unexplained infertility. Kaya lang kasi, the topic was PICO. So, hindi ko siya na-include na with the lecture. Because actually, if you can recall the pie graph na napakita ko, 
20% of the causes of infertility is of unexplained factors. Normal yung findings, walang problema yung transvaginal ultrasound, yung ibang test, wala din problema, pero hindi pa din nabubuntis. Okay, may triad ako niya. Number one, ganun, exercise pa din. Ay, napakita ko yung triad, exercise, healthy diet, and determine the ovulation. Tingnan natin kung nag-ovulate ka. Uh, we can help you. Please uh, message in the Facebook page. You tell MJ that you watch my program and you wish to be assisted in the in your journey to addressing unexplained infertility. Ang tawag dyan, unexplained infertility. Kasi normal ang mga laboratories. Okay? Tulungan natin. Well, wag, no problem. Doc, na ako ipikos before ko nanganak. Nine months na akong baby breastfeed siya. nag ko January o February. Pero March until now, wala na akong ginugo. Negative ang PT. It can be that your polycystic ovarian syndrome has recurred. Again, this is a chronic disease. Parang lang yung hypertension and diabetes. Um, if you will not take care of your modification, bumabalik yan sila. In fact, ako, honestly, pag masyadong stress, nagiging super heavy yung menses ko. That's why I really joined, I joined, um, anong tawag dito? MSC, Mindfulness Self-Compassion Seminar, at, and it helped me manage my stress talaga. Parang um, it gave me another direction, paano tingnan yung stress in a better way, and how do I manage it? Parang ganun siya. So, hindi lang kasi sa food and sa exercise yan, stress, especially this this time, parang lahat ng tao stressed. Before, wala namang ganun eh. Ngayon talaga, Doc, I'm so stressed. Wala talaga. Tapos naiyak-iyak na. May mga ganun. Ito. So, can you look at, saan kaya, saan kaya may problem? Ayan. Oh, yes. Saan na yun? Si Jessa. Nawala si Jessa. Ayan. Hello, Doc. Nakakatulong po ba ang pagpapat? Definitely. Kahit 5% loss of your weight, will already greatly improve reproductive and metabolic function. Yun yung nasa slides ko. Don't worry, yung video ko, i-upload ko in a separate, ano, para ba, kahit balik-balik niya pang panoorin, okay. Sorry, may na ano ba ako? Ah, Doc, unsay di ay buot pasabot anang taas o estrogen, kay napunta manggod sa akong baby. Napunta sa imong baby. ang Pag, pag uh, babae si baby, may estrogen din. Uh, ano kaya ito, no? Well, ma, can you type again? Anong, what you mean by your question? I'll, I'll look at it. Okay? Sige. Okay, Doc, Doc Shee, now I understand <laughs> why you didn't recommend semen test akong hobby right away since all my lab test result was normal. Okay, yes, okay. That's the reason why. Kasi ibang culture natin, di ba? Filipino culture is different. We have to understand them. Again, uh, let's not be too much impatient to be in a hurry. It will really come. Huwag mag-alala. Medyo challenging nga lang yung road natin. But don't worry, rest assured. Mangyayari yan. Uh, with in due time talaga. Let's just, ano, be positive, have faith, and then do whatever we can do. Pag hindi talaga, then we surrender. Pero pag may kaya pa naman, let's do it. But, yun, slowly, surely, yung hindi nagre-relapse yung problema natin. Okay? Ayan. Doc, na-diagnose ko with PCOS na yes, three miscarriages. Is there any relation sa PCOS with the miscarriage, Doc? Girly, yes. Unfortunately, eh, may, may maraming studies na, which I also showed earlier, baka hindi na abutan ni Burly, but yes, unfortunately, because like me, nag, yun, nagka-miscarriage ako nga before nitong rainbow baby ko. That's why I'm always, um, hindi naman always, I, I, I tell my story, I give my testimony for you to know that it's not yet too late. Um, Nagka-miscarriage ako and it was the turning point bakit nag-convert talaga kami into a healthier lifestyle. It was very traumatic for us. Ako ah, obstetrician ako ah, pero my God, sabi ko, ayoko maulit ito. Parang, ano ba sa Bisaya ba? Naunay ko sa ako ang profession. Ano ba yung Tagalog? Hindi ko alam. But yun. So, um, there are also other causes of miscarriage. Perhaps we work it up and then we'll, we'll help you with it. Okay? Let's talk about it. Okay? Okay, Doc, once or twice a year ako mag-mens. 
tas mo abot og 14 days og heavy bleeding tas tanag insig ha tas tanang sign ah, sa pikos na anako na nako daghan buhok na nubo sa akong breast og karon masakit na akong puson if mag-asnat ko og bugat like 1 gallon lang please help me okay Jessa um i hope you you were able to answer one of the tama o mali and then if you wish sure we'll have a free online consultation with you if not and you are not from Cebu you are far from me if you're from Cebu but in the province we have a uh, what's this? A virtual online consultation available. You can click on our page, Dr. Shi Armero OBGYN Lifestyle Clinic. Uh, you can search this in in Facebook. And then our booking assistant will be very glad to help you, assist you with the booking process. And then let's help you. Uh, kaya kaya. We, we can do this. Okay? Okay. I think we have one more. Normal rabat. Ay. Sorry, hi doc, mayang hapon. Naalang ko gamay na concern. Uh, normal ra ba na doc, nagikan sa akong pagpanganak, kawan pa ko giregla sa akong bibi karon na mag three years old na. Ako asya gilutas sa id si iya edad is two years and three months. Hangtod karon wala pa ko giregla ug balik mag one year nagikan sa akong pagregla. Normal ra ba or nagmenopause na ko doc? Okay. Uh, let, let's ano muna. She was breastfeeding. Okay, if you're breastfeeding, there's a chance that you will not have administration. But kung nag-start ka ng nag mens at nawala yung mens mo at hindi ka na nag-breastfeeding, uh, we have to look at the reason why. Yung menopause kasi, uh, apro, ano, tawag dito, average age ng Pilipina nasa 47, 48. Uh, if you are still less than 45 at may ganito ka na, hindi siya ano hindi yan siya physiologic because menopause is physiologic it will happen to us in a whether we like it or not as we reach this a particular age we menopause tayo but if less than 45 at may ganito we have to work up what's the the cause what's the cause of of that one okay i think <laughs> ayana we finished all the questions. Thank you very much for your very, very kind attention. Let's reveal our winners. I hope we have our winners already. Okay. Sige. Are you ready? Let's reveal the winner of yes. Yung, yung kanin, ah, hindi yes. Yung age pala. Okay. The winner for the question age. Okay. May... May mga, may, ayun! May medicine student akong nanonood. Hi, Pat! Uh, you won. The first question is, you, you'll get it, you'll have a free online consultation with me. If not, then you can share this coupon to, to, to others who are, uh, who would want or who needs to have this, uh, what's this? Online consultation. Again, it's transferable. And then, we move on to the first Pop quiz question. Our winner, hi Jade. Jade Carlon is the first uh, pop quiz uh, winner who answered Male. And then we move on to the second question. Second question, our winner is Wow, Mia, you won pop quiz number two. Male, congratulations, Mia. And our third, okay, our third winner is. Hi, Grace. Ayan, nanalo ka na. Pop quiz number three, still mali. Congratulations to our four winners this afternoon. <laughs> Mia and Pat. Uya, murag pabor pabor ne. You won. Congratulations. Okay. <laughs> uh, I hope you, you did not just enjoy, but you also learned a lot in this uh, afternoon uh, about PCOS and infertility. I'm very, very happy that you are um, very excited uh, and looking forward to this. Uh, okay. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next uh, Saturday with our guest who will be talking about uh, substance abuse, addiction, and in pregnancy. Ayan. I, did I miss anything? Super clear and on point. Well, thank you, Mildred. It's clear and on point. Jod, I'm um, explanations. We learned a lot today, Doc. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for all your support. Okay, I those questions na hindi ko nasagot, uh, let's try our best to answer it again. Or you can message in the Facebook page para next, ano, para next episode na masagot na natin. Okay? All right. I think... um. 
That ends our Dangpanan session this afternoon. Once again, I am Dr. Shi Armero, ang Ibong Dangpanan, and you are with me every Saturday at 4 p.m. If you think that this has helped you, please don't forget to click that share button, click that subscribe button, and click that follow button. Uh, I'll see you again next Saturday. Bye!